Assalamu alaikum. My name is Erkan Sarik. I am an optical engineer. Not in the stock. This is not my field. But I try to understand everything about the world about my people. So I, I did a lot of uh, research and I always read. So what I do today, um, I will tell you what happened to your people and uh, a little background why it happened. Uh, because uh, you always hear a story about what's, what's going on in China, what's happening to your people. But a lot of people don't understand why. And I also talk a little about what, how you can help. Okay, first of all, uh, you have seen this map, perhaps. Uh, this is our homeland. It's called East Turkestan. Uh, its territory is one-sixth of the whole China. If you add up uh, East Turkestan, Tibet, and even Mongolia, it, they will consist of 49% of China. But the population is very little. This is three region. If you, if you combine all the popula original population there, it's less than 30 million. And you know, there are 1.4 million people right now in China. So these three people occupy a big chunk of the Chinese territory. Now, how about the population? In 2015, this is the official census, Uyghur population is 11.3, this is what the Chinese government announced. Um, our scholars did a calculation based on statistics and uh, published natural, natural growth rate published by China. If you use that, you get at least 20 million. Um, even the even the uh, population, Uyghur population in China is at, is at politics. They don't tell the true true number. There's a reason. I will tell you why. And now, just uh, about 10 days ago, one Chinese government official in an interview with Al Jazeera said, all together, there are about six or seven million Uyghurs. This shocked us. This shocked us. Right now, a lot of things happening as we speak. It is related to this number. So now we immediately ask, what has happened or what will happen to the remaining 13 to 14 million viewers? Uh, this is a very serious problem. I will explain to you what's happening. And uh, just uh, briefly, I want to tell you who are viewers. You perhaps know, know it. We are one of the Asian people. Um, <clears throat> East Turkestan has been a prominent center of commerce for more than 2,000 years. Um, it gave birth to many great civilizations and at various points of history, it has been a cradle for scholarship, culture, and power. When Muslims rule the world in science, so also our Uyghur people as well. We have very great, great scholars at that time. <clears throat> and, uh, East Turkestan was occupied by Manjus in 1876. And uh, they renamed the region as Xinjiang, uh, which means new territory. The Xinjiang means new territory, given by Manjus. And um, <clears throat> uh, in 1933 and 1944, we were people established a, their own countries twice became independent, East Turkestan Republic. Uh, but uh, it didn't last too long. Uh, in 1949, Communist China came to our land, occupied it, and they called it Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. That's the official name right now. And Uyghur people, uh, Uyghur people hate this name. Uh, we use East Turkestan instead. Because this name itself means it, it meant the death of one million people. China says they got Xinjiang peacefully, it's not. They have a very tragic history. It lasted for about four years. They killed four million, uh, one million people. Uh, if you look at some uh, documentary, the Communist China occupied Tibet by deception, and occupied East Turkestan by massacre. Uh, three people could not stand together. They shoot it. For four years, there's no water. If you see any three people together on the street, shoot them. That's what they did. That's how they got East Turkestan. And they called it, they got East Turkestan peacefully. That's what the peace means for them. Uh, 
And uh, these are some pictures about our culture and the uh, geographic. Uh, you might have tested the river foods, and uh, this is our traditional clothing. We have some sports, an instrument, uh, the handcraft instrument. Even several years ago, if you go to our region, you could see shops like that. But now they're all gone. <coughs> and uh, this is some landscape. Uh, it is a beautiful country. Just uh, last October, uh, my own colleague went to this place. He took pictures and they gave it to me. I didn't see this place myself yet. My colleagues took pictures there. And uh, it's a very beautiful place. Now, what happened to your people? This is a very partial list, but it's, it's good to go through. Today you heard some of them, but it's very good to go through what happened. Most contacts between the Uyghurs in East Turkestan and abroad were cut off since early 2017. I have my siblings. I haven't talked to them for two years. I don't know if they are still alive, dead, where they are, I don't know that. And uh, as uh, uh, that brother told earlier, and I also tried to any Uyghur, if you find out, ask them, they will tell you several members missing. <clears throat> um, the, until recently, we have been saying one to three million Uyghurs are being held in re-education centers, concentration camps, jails, and orphanages. But at this number, I, now we are seeing we are here it's much higher than that, as you said earlier. The, the vast network of internet, internet camps have, has more than doubled since the beginning of 2018 in size. Concentration camp doubled. This is the official number for the, the, the report by Human Rights Watch. Relatives back home of the Uyghurs living abroad don't answer their phone calls anymore. If I call, nobody answers the phone, no phone. <clears throat> Large number of Uyghur allies or people of influence were detained in concentration camps or sentenced to long jail times. Now, what the reason is, some people getting death sentence. I will show you some pictures. Biological data such as DNA were collected from all Uyghurs. Organ harvesting uh, became, from Uyghurs has become a booming economy in Eastern Turkestan. I will show you some picture. In the airport, you see special routes for organ transportation. You don't see anything like that in the world, but uh, you see in our land. You need, you, if, you, if you put several million people in concentration camps, you have a large full of sources to do that. And it's happening right now, it's open. You can see the route is marked, the route is marked. Tens of thousands of Uyghurs went missing in East Turkestan. And uh, we have so many mothers crying uh, since 2009. The sons, husbands, brothers disappeared. They used to cry, they used to go to government for an answer. They stopped. Uh, I think the mothers already died or went to concentration camps. Nobody say, can say anything now. I will show you some pictures of that. Kids of parents who were taken to jails or concentration camps were distributed to orphanages inside and outside of East Turkestan and given Han identities. They changed the name to Han Chinese name. And you, earlier you saw some pictures with that the, the Han Chinese clothes. And those kids don't know their parents anymore when they grow up. <clears throat> and uh, you can imagine when you put several million uh, people in, in the concentration camps, how many kids they left, left, left behind. Uyghur language completely 100% uh, banned from all levels of school starting September 1st, 2018. The Uyghur education system in China was number two until recently. The, I, I, got, I got all of my education in Uyghur language school. From elementary, finishing the college. Uh, as you heard earlier, I work in NASA. We had a system like that, very sound. In China, the, the official says there are 156 minorities, but uh, most of them didn't have their own university. We had. We had a very complete, very sound system. Originally, the quality of education uh, system came from Russia, for example. We had a very good system. But uh, now, China forcefully destroyed all of them, and Uyghur language, and they, they even got allowed to use Uyghur language on the streets. That's what I heard. 
then the people get arrested in England. All Uyghur language books were collected, burned, and destroyed by, by other means. It became illegal for Uyghurs to wear their traditional dresses in workplaces and schools. Islam was completely banned. Uyghurs are not allowed to say some Arabic words such as Allah and Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, our people used to greet each other Assalamu Alaikum. If you say Salam, even Salam, you go to jail. That's one of the uh, crime that you can, can put in jail. Most community mosques are being demolished or turned into entertainment facilities. Uh, when I was little, during the Cultural Revolution, the mosques turned into pig, pig farm, farms. They became the place to, to, to grow pigs, to raise pig, pigs. Now they take them into entertainment centers. Traditional customs like naming children and marriage ceremony, this Islamic way, are prohibited. Uyghur girls are forced to marry Chinese men by the arrangement of the Chinese authorities. Um, I don't know how many girls are dying and how many parents committing suicides for this reason. <coughs> the China, one measure that China used to uh, measure the level of assimilation is the intermarriage. Uyghurs are number, Uyghurs are the last people in the list. Less than 0.1% intermarriedly. But now they put the men in, in jail, concentration camps, and forcing the girls to marry Han Chinese. Uh, some girls marry Han Chinese uh, to save parents. That's the duty of the girls, that's what they're doing. And the, because the China controls all the news so tightly, you don't know what's happening. How many girls kill their husband, you don't know that. How many committed suicide, you don't know that. China only allows some pictures, pictures to leak up. I will show you some of them. That's the happiest ones. And we don't know what other tragedy is going on right now. <clears throat> I heard that in one story, the Chinese business, rich businessman comes to our region to pick girls. You know, the China implemented one child uh, policy for a long time. And the uh, Chinese preferred male, boy, than girls. Uh, because of the recent technology, people can know what, what they have in their stomach. Is it boy or girl? So they give abortion to girl and give birth to boy. Because of this, very huge, gentle imbalance happened in China. So there are so many Han men cannot find wife. The China using Uyghur as a as a means to solve the problem partially right now. So in my story, I heard the Chinese businessman comes to our region. The officials put out the girls uh, who are kept in the concentration camps, lined up in rows. Chinese guy picks one on the on the field. Just like you pick animal in a you know animal bazaar. <clears throat> Chinese men are installed in Chinese men are installed in Uyghur homes whose male family members have been detained. They take out the men and put a hand men in, inside the Uyghur family from authority. Live together. And I heard stories. The wife the young age daughters got abused, raped. And uh, if they happiness, the Uyghur female cannot say anything. If they say it's a crime, it's a terrorist, one of the terrorists like that. They call it terrorist. Islamic clothing and birds are forbidden as a sign of extremism. The usage of Allah labels for food Production has been criminalized, so you cannot have a label and say Allah anymore. So you have to eat whatever is there. <clears throat> and the Chinese officials, Eskel and Uyghur uh, officials, taking them to dinner or lunch and eating with them. And they cannot say, I don't eat pork or something. That's a crime. That they have to eat, you have to eat with them, whatever it is. <coughs> Uyghurs are being forced to do cremation instead of Islamic burial. Islamic girl is gone. They are building a lot of uh, cre cremation facilities next to the concentration camps. There are job announcements for security officers for them. It is published in the media. Islamic books, including Holo, Holo Quran and Praying, praying Mats, were burned 
praying and fasting are banned. Chinese national flag and the portraits of Xi Jinping are placed in mosques. Historical Uyghur buildings were demolished. Uyghur economy was completely destroyed. We used to have a lot of private companies started by Uyghur people and they were very flourished recently. They are all gone. The head were put in the jail for concentration camps and the employees dismissed. Were also in the concentration camp. Checkpoints on every corner and a mandatory spyware installed on, on every device. Members of the security forces are committing torture and extrajudicial killings with punity. If you ride in a motorbike, it goes through a checkpoint and somehow you didn't break, break it on time. If you pass through it, they shoot you. The order, shoot first and we'll deal with them later. That's the order, given to the lowest level of police unit. Member, um, China is systematically, systematically employing less of violence in an effort to physically eradicate the Uyghur minority. One tactic is to move Uyghur internees to other parts of China. This is happening right now as we speak. The, the uh, Sweden media have already published it. Uh, about, they described the train with uh, black clothes, all the windows are closed, uh, blocked. Uh, they won't have uh, detained this to the other part of China. Now you can imagine 1.4 billion Chinese, you say move 10 million Uyghur people, how you can find them, where you find them. Okay, this is the vocational training, training camps, this is what the Chinese government calls it. But actually it's the death camps. Uh, I just talked to a person a couple of last week. He said, in his village, there are more than 20 people died that are in the surrounding of him. He knows personally. And uh, look at it, if they look like a tra the training center, look at the, the barbed wires, and uh, also the monitoring posts everywhere, all the schools. Many of those schools are already converted into concentration camps. And this heavy armed police surrounding it guarding it. And uh, just recently, there was a YouTube video by a Chinese media. Uh, it says, one concentration camp, camp was built uh, in, in Gansu. It's, uh, it's a province next to Uzbekistan. It, it's a Gobi desert, and nobody lives there. It's a complete empty place. Uh, this is language somewhere here. It's a province capital of Uzbekistan. This can hold one million people, one camp, one Detention center can hold one million people. What that means? It, it, it started in 2013. The construction was finished recently. These are some names of Uyghur scholars or prominent people in our homeland that uh, people the, the people outside could, could count. Some of them, we have news on some of them. It's just a partial list. Like uh, writers, poets, writers, bloggers, arts, um, Xinjiang University, Xinjiang Normal University, Xinjiang Medical University, Xinjiang Academy of Social Science, Kashar Normal University, and other figures. This is all in the detention camp or given very long prison terms. <coughs> um, these are some people I personally associated with. A lot of pictures taken in 2006, 2007, or 9. They're all in jails. This blogger, university teacher, he's a professional writer, published about 20 books, artist, he's my uh, classmate. He disappeared in April, in, in February of this year, and uh, his wife became crazy. Um, when I say classmate, you may wonder uh, in my time. We, in one class, we had about 30 students, and we, we, we spent all five years together, took all the classes together. So we don't move from classroom to classroom. Instead, teacher moves around. So we became like relatives. We all know each other's secrets. Even the parents' secrets. Even the parents have how much money in the bank, we know it. We become so close. And this, here's my first friend, gone in, two, in February of this year. And wife became crazy. Here's the president of Xinjiang University. I will show you on the next page. He got death sentence. 
I was a uh, I was the president of Shenzhen University Student Association for four years. He he is my sports department head for two years. Now later he became the Shenzhen University pro, uh, the, the president. Person got death sentence. My principal in the middle school, this is the same person here, and that's the entrepreneur. He's a he's entrepreneur, also a professor at Shenzhen University. He's a he's a, the Founder of a company called Uybersoft, just like Microsoft, he, he uh, made Uybers language software. And a uh, writer, writer, and a uh, 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 critic, lecturer, he got, uh, he got presenters, he got live in person recently. And uh, he's a doctor. And uh, they came to US once, so I even he took them to my GPL to our boarding place. Okay, these are people. He's the vice vice head of the Xinjiang Education Department for many years. I recently he got descendants. President of Xinjiang University got descendants. President of Xinjiang Medical University, he was, he was the president until this March. He got descendants. He's writer, prof, professor, critic, lecturer, he got life in prison. On September 9th, Human Rights Watch published a report, very detailed report, uh, more than 50 pages. They have many pictures taken from satellites, using on satellites, real pictures. And uh, it just came out, and a lot of people are using it. If you are interested, you can uh, read it. The title is Eradic Eradicating Ideological Viruses. After this report, there was a meeting in the UN. Uh, it's about uh, it's related to human rights protection something. The Chinese government representative say, said there's nothing we can in Uzbekistan. Even after, even after they showed the satellite pictures, they said there's no one. And uh, some people abroad, they, they studied that report and uh, they, they listed all the items that can put you in a concentration camp. Things that get, that will get you thrown in, in a Chinese political concentration camp. All all together, 48 items. Let me read some of them to you because we don't have time to read all of them. <clears throat> Abstaining from cigarettes. If you don't smoke, you go to jail. Failing, publicly grieving, or otherwise acting sad when your parent died. God created humans this way. When your parents die, you cry. So if your parents die, you cry, that's a crime for you. Performing a traditional funeral, inviting more than five people to your house without registering with the police department, wearing a scarf in the presence of the PRC flag, wearing a hijab, going to a mosque, praying, Fasting, listening to a religious lecture, telling others not to swear. Because in China, when you become a Communist Party member, you, know, you have to swear. And you know in Islam, you cannot swear to a human. So if you do that, you go to jail. <coughs> telling others not to sing, eating breakfast before the sun comes up. The Chinese government has said that, 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 that they're fasting and they arrest you. This partial list. You heard earlier, this is our life before, this is what I saw in 2009. Your was like this. We drove through a car uh, for driving one kilometer. It took us about like 20 to 30 minutes because so many people. This is what we had in 2009. This is what we have now. All the major cities became ghost town, no people. And uh, <clears throat> when I went back to home in 2009, uh, I met with many young people. It's basically, a lot of young people know me because I worked in NASA. And uh, I did very well when I was college in Urumqi. Uh, I was the president of the student association and also I was a electrical engineering major and studied three languages during, during five years, Han Chinese, English, and Japanese. 
I never took classes, English classes in my life. This is my, what I learned myself. I made all the way from, to the US and also the NASA. Uh, the people. So now the meeting with me at that time was a crime. That means I met about 5,000 people at that time. They're all gone. All the people are gone. This is, the, this is the few examples of how the concentration camp inside looks like. And as you can see, all men, men were taken away. Girls given to Han Chinese. <coughs> uh, mothers, some mothers left. Even though I heard story that uh, some grandparents, grandmother tried to take care of the uh, grandson, granddaughter, they, they're not allowed. They, they, they keep taken away to the, to the orphanage. <clears throat> this is a recent costume. Somebody translated to English. Han Chinese officers choose the girls they like among the detainees and force them to, to do whatever they like, especially for fulfilling their sexual desire. And this help us to be free and spread our pity to the world. This is something some of the road from inside, inside China. This was an article from 2014. At that time, China promoted intermarriage. They gave money to if you were a girl, American Chinese. This is in 2014. But this is now. Had Chinese people my little girls. As I said, there's a huge imbalance between male and female in Han Chinese. This is part partial solution of the problem. And uh, Especially to this, pay attention. If you're a parent of such a girl, you are Muslim, and uh, you are asking to give your daughter to a Han man, if you don't, your extended family will go to jail. What do you do? You don't know how many parents killed themselves, if they could kill themselves. And uh, as I said earlier, these are the pictures leaked by the government. The government allows the issue to go out. We don't know what the real station is because it doesn't represent the real station. As I said earlier, the husband taken to the camp and some Chinese men installed into real families, live with the living wife and daughters. This is some pictures also leaked out. And, uh, when I come to, came to the U.S., I went to a uh, church uh, gathering. We, get, we decided to go to eat where. And uh, the, my tech friend said, let's go to a Chinese restaurant. And I told them, I have never been to a Chinese restaurant, even in China. Why we go to a Chinese restaurant in the U.S.? So we changed it to a different restaurant. That's how the real people lived. We hate folks. We never mingle in food with other people. But uh, now our people are forced to do this. And this is one article by Associated Press, recent article. China treats women kids as orphans of the parent parents seized. They take out take out the they put the parents in the jail or concentration camp and they take the kids as orphans, even the parents still living. This is how the workers looked like a couple of years ago. This is, this is what I we know. This is what we see, see the, how we grew up and the hate in our region. Just a couple of years ago. And this is what it is now. All these clothes are traditional Han Chinese clothes. Even Han Chinese don't wear this. This is a, this is a Confucian clothes. This one is like 2,000 years old. And this is traditional Han Chinese performance. Nobody watches this right now in China. Why do they have the Arabic language or Arabic letters on that picture? Which one? The bottom left picture. Oh, yeah, because this, this happens in our region. Oh, that's our region. That's our region. This is a stage. This is a stage. Stage performance. Now he's asking about language. 
Oh, this, this, is, this is the Uyghur language. The, the old language is Arabic. This other two, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not exactly the same, but other two are modified. So do the Chinese still allow it? No. Uh, not now. It's just sure. It's one of the propaganda show for the, the local people. Mm. And uh, there's other the kids with the after parents gone. They have many videos like this. Look at this. This is the orphanages. And as, as I said earlier, Chinese uh, gathered Quran's Islamic books, praying mats, everything. They burned it. When this was announced, the next couple of days, there's a river in, in East Pakistan called Ili River. A lot of Quran floating on the river for a couple of days. People didn't want to turn in instead of throwing to the river at midnight. And nobody was watching. But uh, right now, if they find any Uyghur book, Uyghur language book from the book, we go to jail. That's how severe it is. Not, not only religious, but any book. This is an alcohol drinking contest in Ramadan. They used to give out candy, cookies, in schools during Ramadan, month, during month, month of Ramadan. This is what they are doing right now. The Khrushchev, Khrushchev did also an attack recently. They are doing a similar thing to Khrushchev as well. These are pictures uh, from 2009. Uh, there's a Urumqi massacre in 2009, on the July 5th of 2009. The, the people, the estimate is about 3,000 men died, about 7,000 disappeared in one night. Then after two days, the mothers, wives, or sisters came out the street. You cannot see them, you cannot find any men anymore. They all come to the capital city in the region. And this is what they did on the next day. And this is, this is what the police did. And this mother cried for many years. The Radio Free Asia supposed used to interview with them. They really mothers looking for their son. They don't find out that. No, they stop crying. And this is how they when they round up we were young men, this is how they did it, especially the sin. Especially the sins. Just they went to every room. House to house, whatever man they find, they just grab it and do this. And there's some torture people get. And we are hearing the, the real stories in front of concentration camps. There are several Kazakh people who get out of camps. They tell a story like this. This is what they did. This lady lives abroad. The, I gathered her. Um, story and wrote up in English. Uh, she's available for in-person testimony. She lives abroad. She was in prison when she was 16. Two older brothers were executed in front of her. When they executed her two brothers, she, they took, up, took her out to the killing, to the shooting field, the execution field, to let her watch it. The third older brother was executed without her presence. Father died in a prison. Mother died at home due to a heart attack after losing a husband and uh, three sons. She was gang raped by prison guards for many times. She had miscarriages twice in, in the prison. She, she was forced to shout, Communist Party Akbar, not Allah Akbar. Communist Party Akbar was, she didn't think Akbar. She is a very faithful lady very loyal to Islam. She didn't want to say that. And uh, that's how she got tortured, because she didn't want to say from this party, Akbar, or she didn't think Akbar. Oh, and I wanted to uh, just clarify something, because someone had said that they're Buddhists, but majority of them are atheists. They don't believe in any no, God. No, These are no, no, not Buddhists, yeah. no, no. The yeah. closest you saw earlier mm -hmm. is, a, is a traditional Han Chinese clause from Confucian times. Mm -hmm. It's not Buddhist clause. It's not. 
So we should reiterate that, that well, these I will, are, I will, yeah, I will these are non-believers, they are atheists. Chinese so. culture does not allow any religion. Mm -hmm. It doesn't allow it. <clears throat> Her face was burned with cigarettes and was told, call you God for a rescue. This happened many times. We, I heard this kind of story many, many times. Look at her face. They, they took out girls' clothes and burned the body with cigarettes. Then call you God. Let that see if he can help you. That's what they did. Look at her face. She was kept in a water cell, water cell for many months. Uh, she has more than 1,000 scars in her face and the body. One little streak. Uh, the first stick she was, was put from here and took out from the other side. There was a big scar here. I have a picture of that. The, now the people abroad started to testify on the YouTube. Um, there are a lot of them, people talking one after another. These are some of the examples who testified on the YouTube. Uh, he feels that he is one of them when he's at the same picture. This is one, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have YouTube addresses if you're interested, all, all of them. Now, why genocide of all wars? Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the historical prospect, because a lot of people get this wrong. Why China does that? Like me, uh, in many places, I cannot tell my story to other people because they don't believe. They, they think I am lying. I'm making up stories. They don't believe. Chinese are so nice people. Why they do that? <clears throat> China is not a nation state, but a civilization state. The, the fundamental feature of a civilization state is live is very long than nation states. For example, take Rome Empire. Persian Empire, England Empire, right out of the American Empire, for example. All of the empires have empire gone. But the China lives very long. This is, a, this is China in 2006 BC, before the century. It expanded, but still living, using the same system. You think that communist, communist, communist started in 1949, the China changed, it's not. Its political system is 200. 2,200 years old, never changed. They just changed the, changed the name, but the system is the same. They just keep expanding. <clears throat> and uh, you know, this is the current China. This is 2006 BC. And another feature is it has big territory and big population. Being governed by Han School of Thought. Uh, because of this, all the Western scholars miss China. They don't understand what China, what, what, what China is. China has their own unique school of thoughts. They do everything with that. It's not comparable to the Westerners. Hans carried out, carried out cultural, political, and biological assimilation throughout their history. Intellectuals are backbones of such policy. There's no, there, there, there is no intellectual freedom in China. The intellectuals don't speak freely. They don't, they don't have their, their own thoughts. They serve for the government. They do whatever the government asks them to do. In general, culture is for human development, controlled by humans and serves the humans. But in China, humans serve the Chinese culture. So everybody serves because of Chinese culture. Now you should start to understand why they do what they're doing to us. So a religion cannot exist and is not allowed to exist in Chinese culture. Han people live with Han supremacy and do not allow different cultures and different races to exist in their society. A lot of people in America or Western countries don't understand this. Chinese people come to the US and call us American law way. They call us a law way, well, the law way. They call us law way, American law way. It's a word that uh, uh, put you down, basically. You, it's a word that says you are inferior to them. They are superior to you. So even the, U, the Han Chinese in the US, when they talk to each other, they say, long me, long way, long me. That's what they do. 
That's why they assimilate all other cultures and races into their own. So they don't allow it of any other culture or religion or anything, anything different from them, they don't allow it. <clears throat> Hand rulers like masculines don't care much about human lives. Uh, this, is a, this is China in, uh, before 2006 BC. At that time, there, there, there are seven countries fighting with each other. Each other. There's a, um, if, you, if you look up Spring Autumn Warm States, there's a book, even it's English translation. This is a very important history. It's the history of how China, how China came up with deceptions, deceptions theory for 500 years before uh, 231 BC. They came up with all sorts, and now they use it even now today. When they did them in the US, they use the same theory. They were left 2,200 years ago. At this time, there are seven countries. The one guy called Ying Zhang, um, he was leading the Qing country. He invades Zhu and captures 10,000 people as a prisoner of war. And uh, they ordered to kill all of them. The sword, the sword. There's a documentary on that one. The first, the first in, emperor of China, if you look at it, it's a big documentary, made in Western country, and talks about this. Now, the during Cultural Revolution, Chinese leader Mao Zedong kills an estimated 30 to 60 million people. He, he told his general, generals of the province head to kill 0.1% of the Chinese population. There's a documentary on this one, uh, made in America. One time, the head of Nanjing and the Shanghai comes to him and, and the reports to him how many people they killed. He said, no, not enough, kill more. This is an original word. And as I said earlier, in 1949, when the China invaded East Pakistan, they killed one million people. It lasted from 1949 to 1953. The, the, the commander in chief is, is Wang Jin, a Chinese. Because he killed so many, the government was not happy with him at the time. They took him back. And in 1977, when Ding, Ding Xiaoping came to power, um, he excused him. He came back to the power again. That was history. This one in Yarkin, 2014, there was a, a Yarkin massacre happened. In one night, three villages gone. It flattened. So today you see three villages with Uyghur people, next day you come, it's gone, it's flat. If you take picture from the sky, satellite or airplane, you see flat land, nothing left. We have people who escape, escape from the massacre. And uh, you have a true story, I, I put a address here, uh, told by him what happened. So the mass killing is very accustomed thing for Chinese people. They, they did it in the history and uh, they, they can do it again. Um, this is a professor in, in uh, um, Nankai University. He's a military professor, as you can see. Uh, in 2013, he told the class of general, future generals of the Chinese army. This is what he said. Do you know what is the foundation of, for our nation to become stronger? It is not national defense, not education, and not economy. It is the vast territory we own. We have 1.6 million square kilometer of territory. It is the pride of us, the Han people. During the past 200 years, we have assimilated all of the minority ethnic groups in the peripherals of China into our race. The nature of our culture is to assimilate. We change and accept the good races into our own society and torture and, and eradicate the bad ones. So now we, we became that bad ones. And uh, that's, what, that's what we are seeing today. There was an article recently by Drew Gladney. He's a professor at, uh, in California. Bridge or Barrier to Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative. This tells us why China does it, in addition to what I said earlier. Uh, Professor Gladly says, China is not just striking hard at separates, but maybe 
attempting to completely stamp out once for all any potential source of resistance to the Chinese rule in the region. China is taking advantage of the international war on terrorism to attempt to eradicate a domestic problem, paving the way for its stable corridor to expand its Belt and the Road Initiative. You know this thing, China started a couple of years ago. And it starts from our region, this is Kashgar, this Urumqi, all this region. So our homeland has a strategic importance to China, and they don't want to have any problem. That's the, another reason that the Uyghur faces this kind of fate today. And this one you saw it earlier. So I was alarmed, we were alarmed by this. Now from 11.3 to something it became 6 to 7 million in Chinese language, Chinese official language, and we don't know what was going to happen to the rest. Uh, this was, he was at the uh, a couple of weeks, two weeks ago. His military cut, he's a Uyghur. He's an FDSM, you know him. Uh, he's a very famous guy, Muslim. Um, the, okay, we don't have time for this, but uh, uh, basically what it says is China has chosen cultural genocide in, in Xinjiang for now. What this article says is he takes historical facts, this Nazi Germany, and Bangladesh and several other places. In all those places, we had, a, we had Holocaust, for example, massacring a large number of people. It started originally as a cultural genocide, but at the end it turned into physical genocide. Uh, the one reason for that is the cultural genocide is very hard to maintain. It is very complicated, very difficult, needs a lot of money. And uh, when you don't enough resources to do that, you turn to a physical genocide, you kill all the people. This happened as, as, uh, as late as the uh, uh, Rohingya. Rohingya happened to the people. So what this article says, it's, it might be coming for more people. And uh, there are articles now, the Chinese government moving the Uyghurs who are detained in concentration camps and jails into other parts of China. The Helungyang, this place is about 5,000 kilometers away from us. They just received 5,000 Uyghur men recently. And, uh, and uh, now there are reports that China announced they do, they're not going to sell train tickets starting October 22nd and beyond. There are tens of trains who come in and go out from our homeland. So for, for our own trains, they are not going to sell tickets anymore. So it indicates they're going to use all, all those trains to move our people to other parts of China. So we all became crying baby right now. The reason is, once they move, we can hear us hear them again. It's going just like that. It happened, it started as we speak right now. The, the, new, the new reports, people saw the train. All the window was blocked with black clothes. It's, it's happening right now. So this is what we had in 1940s. And then this is, this is not the Uyghur people, but uh, as you can see, close is the same. So I just picked this picture, but uh, I don't know if this picture is not Uyghur or not, but this is how it's happened. And uh, another thing I, I said earlier a little bit, the living organ transplant is a huge business in China. They killed a lot of Falun Gong believers before. Now it's shifted to Uyghur people. This is an airport in Kashgar, one of the big cities in Kashgar. It's marked special guests, special, tra special travelers. Human organ transportation route, it's, it's used. It's, it's taken like this. We have many examples, young people released from the Concentration camps or prisons, they go home, they die in two or three days, they sit on the chair, they're gone. When the parents examine, they have a big scarf here. All by the inside taken already. The, the person knows they will die, they release them, they let them die in the house. That's what's happening. And you know, it's not, it's not allowed in Islam, or in any religion, or in any human society. It is, it is happening to us. 
And uh, I put out this, uh, how you can help. Um, I, it's very relaxing, but earlier I, I talked I talk to my sister the, about the, how, how Muslim Uyghurs are used to be. I grew up in the society, I knew them. They're so good-hearted, so caring. They, when Palestine, Palestinians have problems, our people gather donations to send to Palestine, 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 even if they are so poor. They believe all Muslims are one family. We should help each other. That's what the Imam said in, in, in Jumeirah. But before the Jumeirah prior, that's what they say. People gather money, give whatever they want. A lot of Uyghur people named their son as Arafat. We have a lot of names called Arafat. I will go to a wedding next month. His name is Arafat too. If Uyghur people care like this. When the United States invaded Iraq, Uyghur people cared. They started a donation collection, prayed for them, and a lot of people called their sons as Saddam. Now all those names are banned too. Uyghur people are such a caring. But until recently, when we go through all of this, the Muslim world, Muslim countries in the, in the world are the best friends for China. When the Chinese president went to, went, went to Dubai, they wrapped the tallest building in the world with Chinese flag. Back home, they are killing Uyghur Muslims like this. There is no single word of complaint or whatever, nothing. They say they are so good friends, blah, 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 like this. And we didn't hear the Muslim voice at all until recently. It's a tragedy for us. And uh, sometimes I told my friends, what Quran are the Muslims learning? Why, why they, they have a completely different concept about being Muslims? Where they are when they need help? The 20 million Muslims don't, don't, doesn't, don't matter anymore? It may be it don't matter to, to the Muslim world because we have so many of them. But the Uyghur world, our dear uh, people are going to be going away right now. So please come. Thank you. I'd like to thank Dr. Hakim Sadat for coming all the way from <coughs> California yesterday from Los Angeles uh, with the red eye flight. So for specifically for this event. Thank you so much for his information he has provided. So I'd like to just wrap up real quick. Thank you for you guys for Brothers Saif, you remember that I show my picture of my father in the beginning of the presentation that before I escaped my, my country, Turkestan, that was the last ever picture that I took with my father. And I posted on social media, on, on Facebook. And the brother Saif, he was my Facebook friend, and he texted me. He said, you know, what's going on? I've never heard such a thing. He said, can we meet? And I said, yes, let's, let's meet. I was very excited. I didn't have this idea. I didn't know what to do. We were trying to do something, but we just brand new in this situation, and we were young, and uh, we met in our office. He said, what can I do for you? I said, I'm not sure, but he said, you know, why don't you organize an event? I'm going to call all the Muslim members of Northern Virginia, uh, from Darul Hijra, uh, Darul Nur, and uh, Adam Center, whoever I know, I'll do my best to bring as much as Muslim.